So that there was just a disinfectant chamber. Also it said only wear masks in buildings, so I'm gonna take it off for now. As I just exited that door over there, I've walked around and you have the infamous uh, little entrance gate just here. Which reads on it, our bite, marked fry. To be honest with you, I don't know German well enough to know what that says. There you go. Our bite, match, fry. I know fly means free, our bite is, I think, to work. The barrier which is constantly raised barbed wire fence, the train tracks, everything about it, some little hut next to it. As you can see as well, some something just here which has been blocked up. As it is just nothing down there. Maybe we have a bit of writing here. Basically say a general over overview of what's happened here. So literally just on the other side of that sign we have this, which is obviously saying stop very aggressively with the skull and bones. And right here you've got like all this space. And just over here explains what happened. Prisoners were shot here or trying to escape. Often they were displayed as a warning to others. So they were displayed just as a dead body. Here's a photograph of all the workers lining up so they could do a count of people as they come in and out of work. Um, you know, obviously if people escape then there's issues. And I don't know this for sure, but I'm gonna take a stab in the dark here and say these holes are from guns, or maybe they're just from weather or corrosion, whatever it may be. Stab in the dark, previous camps that I've been to, similar things have been gunshots. It just doesn't explain it on here. To do a count, which they call a roll call of the prisoners. So right here where I'm stood now is where they would stand up and they would count how many prisoners. You can see, occasionally they would collapse because of weather. Maybe it was too hot or maybe it was too cold. They either froze to death or they would have a heat stroke. No one was able to help them up if they collapsed. It's just how it was. Somebody next to you collapsed, you'd have to just leave them. I guess similar to how the army is now actually. Only difference is in the army, you'd have someone to come along independently, like a first aider maybe to come and collect them, whereas then they would literally leave them to just die. They would just collapse right there. There's nothing you could do about it. It could have been your own family member, it could have been your friend. And they were just left there. Block four, extermination. Mask is back on. In here. There's a lot of writing in here, so like any camp, there's a lot of information. A lot of information in any camp you go to, as well as a lot of pictures, because the SS like to take photos, almost as a bragging rights to show like, look, look at what we've done, all the horrendous things we've done. Hence why there's so much documentation on this very thing. So I'm not going to show you all the writing, I'm just going to show little bits. And I'm just going to go through it in my own pace. <laughs> And here is the belongings of the people that died. As you can see, these are just suitcases. They're on and on. Wait until you see what's coming up next. Oh, it's 
if that wasn't enough for pictures, this is a, another building that I've just walked into. It just goes down, individual pictures, all the way back up. People who all died, photographed for their fate. You can see the terror in most of their eyes. It's crazy to look at. There was a bit in there which showed the same thing with the pictures of the people who died, but with the children. But it was too morbid to record. I felt really bad. Really, really speaks to you different when you look at the pictures of all these people. When you look at the when they were born, when they died, you know, the dates. Not a single smile on any of their faces. It was just terror fear into the in the faces on the pictures a lot of them were just scared because they knew what was coming the children bit really was just horrible to look at there wasn't as many as that that they pictured but there was a lot of them that they just never pictured they just got rid of them and that was it after like I think 1943 no more pictures were taken unless like certain circumstances You don't know until you come here yourself and just experience it. It's harrowing, to say the least. This wall behind me, thousands got shot against it. It was knocked down in 1944, I think it said, 1943. Um, then the camp started killing people other ways, gassing, etc. This wall was then slightly reconstructed by the museum, uh, so it's not the complete original, but it's as original as you'll get. Uh, and you can see all the bullet holes in it. Literally thousands of people died right there. Just in front of me, these gallows are where they used to hang people. Right here is a hanging station where they used to hang people. And we're about to go into gas chamber crematorium. Straight into here, hole in the ceiling. Trying to look at holes like this. Bodies were placed in there, burnt in there. We come full circle. That's the entrance over there where I came in earlier on. Honestly, pretty crazy experience. As I've already mentioned now a couple of times, I have visited camps before. Obviously, they've all been in Germany. This one's in Poland. 
I don't know if it's just because this one is one that I'm at right now. This is really a tough one to get through, genuinely. There's so much history and so much information to take in. And you almost, it's like you know what's what to expect. You know what to expect, but it's still, still difficult to read. It's difficult to take in the information. And with that, let's try and make this a little bit more uplifting. I'm just leaving now. Uh, we need to go figure some stuff out. Phone's almost dead. Luckily, I can charge it in the car, so that's not an issue. We'll go grab my bag, and then uh, we'll get on the road, carry on with the Poland trip. And with that, I leave Auschwitz only more knowledgeable about World War II and the atrocities. I leave here not realizing I was really gonna come today. Woke up in my hometown today, got the flight, immediately got my car, and I just decided off the whim, this would be a great place to start off my trip. And uh, in its own way, it was a great place to start off the trip. But in other ways, obviously it was uh, hard to get through. We're just going to the car now, and once we're at the car, we'll decide where we go next. This trip is a bit off the whim, like I say. I haven't really planned much, because I don't know what's in each city in uh, in Poland. So we're just going to go to the next city, book the hotel, which I haven't yet done. Hopefully I can book a hotel for tonight. And then, uh, and yeah, carry on with the trip. And of course, my car the only one left in the car park. Everyone else has gone home and I'd spent my time looking around everywhere, making the most of it. And a wasp just flew into the, literally inside there. What are you doing wasp? Look how new this car is. The car's only done 1,624 kilometers. It is brand spanking new. Okay, luckily managed to get an apartment booked in Wrocław, which is uh, about two and a half hours away from where I am at the moment, um, which means I'm gonna get there just after 9 p.m. Um, it's currently half six, so yeah. It is what it is, uh, but I wanted to go there. It just turned out there was a place for me to stay in an apartment. Hopefully it's all good. Uh, until I get there, I have no idea what to expect. Um, but yeah, but uh, yeah, about two and a half hours drive. It's 227 kilometers from now. So that's what it's looking like right now. I will see you guys at nine. Really nice from what I've seen in it. I've literally just walked in. So, um, yeah, they're my snacks for the night. Check this out. So, what have we got? Zoom out there. So, I've got the bar where I've just put the snacks. We have cooker, little sink, fridge freezer, some drawers, etc. You know, it's an apartment, so it's you know, pretty, pretty decent. We have a little sofa down here to sit on, two-seater sofa. Even have a little TV that I can watch, you know, all good. Then I wondered where the hell is my bed? Now I realized, ladder up there. The bed's up on top of like the second floor almost. So we're gonna go check it out because I've not actually been up there yet. I just need to put my bag down. And we'll just go check this out. God, check this out. It's just literally on the floor. Not the comfiest. It's a little tiny for me, my size. It's not too bad actually, I'm just worried I'll fall out. You go all the way down there. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. I know it's been a bit of a downer as, you know, concentration camp and everything. Uh, I appreciate you for watching. I'm glad to be back on YouTube, glad to be traveling again. Hopefully this coronavirus thing doesn't stop us too much from doing much more. 
I'm just lucky at the moment I've got like a few days worth in Poland to actually travel and drive around and do what I want to do. Um, but I will be having to go back to the, the one day trips again uh, once I'm back at work. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to stop the video here. I don't want to go on too long. Like I said, I'm going to keep them short and snappy. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>